I'll run. So I want to go through a little bit of the basic uh, Photoshop notes. So I'll go into the folder this week, into this folder, and I'll go through some of these uh, images. Okay, so first we I talk about screen modes, which is the F hotkey in uh, Photoshop. So if you press F once, you go into full screen mode with the menu bar. Okay, I recommend you to be painting in this mode most of the time. So what am I talking about? So this is like a document that we have. I've just opened this. So if I press F once, F, see how the it becomes more full screen. And then I still have all the panel here. And a good thing about this compared to the previous note is that I can use this hand. So I've been holding down space key right now and I can pan around. So if I'm painting a ball, I can pan around and I can uh, paint it a little bit more fluidly, I think. Okay, you can also press Control plus and minus to zoom in and out. All right, press uh, press F once more to go into full screen mode, and then if you press F the third time, you will go back to default. So it's also at this uh this uh icon over here, the keys without shortcut. So you can see it rotates from standard view to full screen mode, and then to uh full screen mode with menu bar, and then back to full screen mode. So it rotates three times. So F one more time, it goes full screen, totally full screen. So, uh, it's only useful if you want to go fully full screen without any layers or anything. So you shouldn't be painting this so often. Uh, you can change the color here. So let's say I don't like the border to be black color. I can change it to medium gray. Okay. F, F, F. So you rotate three times. F one time, full screen. F one more time, full screen with uh, no more bars. And then F one small, it goes back to your first mode. All right, so uh, three modes is over here. You can click it to change it up. All right, so uh, you can also use the navigator panel window to have an overview. So let me just uh, click on that window workspace. Sorry, Windows uh, Navigator. You will have that open once you click Navigator. And then uh, probably it's over here or somewhere. You just uh, pop it in here and then you can zoom in and out. Also using Navigator window. All right. So next, uh, control plus and minus, I've mentioned to you, zoom in and out, hold down space to uh, use the hand tool. And when you're using a brush, you can uh, hold alt to uh, use the color picker. Then you can also adjust the brush size smaller and bigger using the plus and minus bracket on uh, this location on your keyboard. So your left hand, please uh, be busy. Your left hand needs to move around a lot. Um, you never see a... Uh, Never see a piano master playing piano with just one hand, you know. So the same thing for you. Um, you're a digital artist. You use both hands. So one hand on with a walking pen or, or mouse, another hand on your keyboard. Your keyboard has to be moving. Your hands has to be jumping around. Shift plus and minus to adjust the brush size. So let's say um, let me demonstrate. So I'm using this round brush size size thirteen, size thirteen, and then I can. Make it bigger, make it smaller, shift. Once I hold down shift, you look over here, it becomes smaller. Shift, left bracket, shift, right bracket, shift, left bracket, shift, right bracket. So it can become harder, it can also become softer. Shift, left bracket, shift, right bracket. Right. Uh, burn or dodge is over here, smudge is over here. Uh, I'll go through more of the use in the videos uh, up ahead later. Um, shift, you can use uh, this uh, arrow left or arrow left right button beside your M on your hotkeys on your keyboard to change to the previous brush and the next brush. So you see, I have all this brush over here. So if I want to rotate between them, so let's say I start off with this, uh, this one in the middle, and then I use the left arrow, doo -doo 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 -doo, it goes to the left, right arrow, it goes down, left and right, left and right. Okay, if I want to go down, if I'm using somewhere like 100 brush, and I can just shift arrow left, it jumps back to my first brush, which is the default brush. Always, I like to go back to my default brush. It goes to a shift right arrow, it jumps to my last brush. Last brush uh, should be on my last brush of all the folders. It jumps to my last brush, which is scatter brush. So I also jump between my first brush and last brush very often. Shift left arrow, shift right arrow. Which cloud is a better base to start off the colors with? Um, if you didn't know the answer, it's the one on the left. Okay, although the white clouds 
looks like it's a very um it looks like it could be nice to start off with because it's pretty straightforward. But the left one would be a better base color to start with because um I always like to use a dodge and burn on them. So if you use a dodge, I need to have some middle tone value. So look at all these colors. They are middle tone. And then the same for this one. If I were to burn, use my burn tool, I need to have an image with a middle tone middle tone value. So so it will be easy based colors to start with. If I just straight away I use a white, totally pure white, and then I start painting maybe the sh the shadows here, and then uh, to have a darker shade, and then maybe oh my supervisor comes along. Hey, I want the highlight to be even brighter, and then I would have to tell him, hey, I can't make it any brighter anymore. I'm already using white. It's already a maximum white. Whereas uh, if I'm using this image, hey, if someone comes along. You want to have some highlight size brighter? Yeah, I can do it. I can still uh, adjust it. I can have a, a red area over here that is brighter than this uh, blue area over here. So I hope you understand what I mean. I don't want to go through this in uh, too much in depth uh, because I think I'll, I'll keep repeating a few of these points along the way as well. But this video, I want to just keep it within the basic Photoshop uh, some notes to go through. All right. So, so on the HSV hue, saturation, and the brightness, uh, I will talk about the same thing. So there's values over here. There's saturation on this corner. There's hues over here that you can change on the color view, and then there's these four corners, right? The brightest value, lower saturation, brightest value, higher saturation, and all this. So these are the four extreme colors. You cannot be adjusted and push further. So it's the same thing as the clouds that I've told you before. If you're using pure white, you can't be pushed any further. Someone comes along and tells you, I want it to be brighter than white. You can dream on forever. You can never do it. It's impossible. Try not to. That's why I tell you, try not to paint using these colors that is close to the edge. When you paint everything and you are starting out, just paint using this, uh, these corners here these four corners, recommended area of colors to use. So even if you know, you know the clouds is white, everyone knows that, but you don't need to pick a pure white to, to illustrate that your cloud is white. You know, like, like look at the clouds in the sky, it's not pure white. It's, you, you can, you can uh, bring a, if uh, I wish there's a color picker in real life for you to color pick, you know, but most of the time, something that you see is white is not pure white. It falls under here. Maybe the brightest one is probably only here. And the darkest one is probably only here. You, seldom you will use extreme colors. So when you are painting, especially when you're just starting your painting, please uh, start off with your colors and pick your colors and uh, use your colors within this zone. Uh, it's definitely the most recommended area to use for painting to start with. All right. Um, also, uh, one more thing, uh, let's say we are doing this exercise, uh, you should look at the reference image as well as your painting when you start painting. Meaning you should, I recommend you to have all four balls on your screen, which is kind of like this. When you are most of the time, when you paint, there isn't the need for zooming in too much for this exercise. And uh, actually for all the exercise, when you just start off with the painting, most of the time I'll just keep myself zoomed out. And the reason, uh, I don't want to micromanage you per se, but honestly, I've seen a lot of people making mistakes just because they are too zoomed in. So they are zooming in like this when you paint. So sometimes I'll tell the student, hey, I want you to use a big round brush like this. You know, you use a big round brush and then on the other hand, you're zooming in like this. So there's no way that you can paint this bottom side. You know, like, like there's just no way. There's just no way you can make something balanced. So if you zoom in too much, it's actually detrimental to your own painting. So don't zoom in like this to paint. It's not really helpful. Even cropping part of your subject, uh, yeah, it's just uh, not very helpful at all. Like you should only zoom in. I zoom in to paint as well, but only after I'm almost 80% done with my painting, like almost 80%. So you can consider this like 80% done already. So you can probably zoom in, but uh, this is a ball. So there's also not much to zoom in. Right? Or you can tell yourself, hey, you can start zooming in after you work on like two, three hours on your painting because there is really no reason to zoom in. So yeah, uh, last thing. She, uh, should I illustrate this? Yeah, probably I'll just illustrate this really quickly. So some sometimes students, they would paint 
and then they'll, they'll just pin like this, you know, and I'll just tell them, hey, um, you're probably working on the highlights, but if you're just looking at one thing, you're missing out on the other. So you should really don't zoom in too much. Zoom out, zoom out, and look at the overview picture when you pin. Same thing when you're doing zoom drawing, you know, you should zoom out, know how to zoom out more often. And actually this range here, this kind of spacing between the left and the right side, this is a perfect area to start painting on, seriously. Now, uh, I want to talk about brush and pen transfer as well. So let's say you are doing, uh, let's say I press F5, which is my brush settings. My brush settings is over here, this icon, or you press F5 on the keyboard. Okay. Uh, so some of my brushes, they, they already have a pen pressure. And then if you see this, uh, if you see this icon over here, uh, this exclamation mark, that is because I'm not using my pen. So if you see this icon, that means I'm not using pen pressure. So once I'm using pen pressure, hey, it disappears. See that? So now I'm using Wacom. If now I'm using my, my mouse, nope, no pen pressure. It's giving me an exclamation mark. So sometimes you need to know like uh, whether you want to have pen pressure or you don't want to have pen pressure. So let's say I'm just uh, working on this brush and then um, I'm using my, my uh, let me find a blank canvas. Let me find a bank canvas. Okay, so default brush like this. Okay, so it has some hand pressure and it does not have some hand pressure. So how do you make sure your pen has the pen pressure? You need on this transfer button. Okay, so, so once you on this transfer button and then you can select uh, pen pressure on opacity and then you can do the one more on the left, and then you can have opacity when you pin. So if you don't want it, you can off it, and then you can just be hard when you pin, and then you just control the opacity through the opacity channel on top. So it really depends on you. Actually, I don't mind. I'm kind of used to uh, without pen pressure myself. So uh, yeah, you may think that is weird, but I kind of got used to it. All right, second thing. Uh, if the brush stroke doesn't have thick and thin form. Yeah, so there's an error and the and the pen pressure is not working. So this could be the same thing I talked about. The uh, you have the exclamation mark over here. If you are using Wacom and you still have this uh, exclamation mark, then you need to really check your drivers, you know, because uh, I can't show you because mine is working perfectly fine and most of the time it should be. But just take note, um if your pen pressure is not working as intended. Like if you do a test like this, make sure your transfer is on and your pen pressure is on. And then you can try it on this uh, flow jitter as well as opacity. And you, if you like to, to paint with pen pressure, then you should be able to get lines like this very nicely. All right. So, yep. So that's all for the basic notes. And then I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.